Guten Morgen, meine Freunde, and willkommen to the series where it's yesterday once more, which is great, but the yesterday which it is, is picked at random. And the yesterday it is today is the week ending March 27th, 1970. At number 10 this week on the 4IP charts is an all-time classic. Den Haag's greatest psych rock band Shocking Blues, Mighty Venus. And great as that song is, the B-side, Hot Sand, is very nearly just as good. Down from 7 last week from an insultingly low high of 3, I think if we look back on this series after time, this will stand out as one of the best records never to make number 1. Shocking blue trivia, Nirvana recorded their song Love Buzz as their debut single. The number 9 spot is held down by a genuinely great Australian, Lionel Rose. After winning the World Bantamweight boxing title with an epic 15 round win over the much more fancied Fighting Harada, Rose became the first Indigenous Australian to win Australian of the Year. A national hero and an enduring icon to Indigenous people, known for his humility and dry country wit, Rose dallied with pop music during some downtime from the fight game to inoffensive results. I Thank You is no Venus, but it made number one and helped Rose embed himself a little further in the national consciousness. Rose enjoyed a successful business career after his singing and punching people career, sounds a bit like an Elvis film, but sadly passed away in 2011. At number eight, we have the first of three records on the Beatles' Apple label on this week's chart, Temma Harbour by Mary Hopkins. The record was produced by no less a luminary than Mickey Most, who gave his hits by Donovan, Herman's Hermits, the deliriously wonderful Hi-Ho Silver Lining for Jeff Beck, House of the Rising Sun and the original I Love Rock and Roll. To be honest, I don't, I don't care much for this one. Its arrangement is all over the shop and the lyrics are silly and it just wastes a valiant vocal from Hopkins. A sharp riser from number 14 the previous week, obviously the good burgers of the Sunshine City disagreed with me. Number 7, up from 12, is another Apple record, Come and Get It by the ill-fated Bad Finger. An Abbey Road offcast from Paul McCartney, it patently wasn't good enough for Abbey Road, but was it really any worse than Oh Darling or Maxwell Silver Hammer? The record is tuneful and charming, but underproduced, and it uses up all its good ideas in the first 45 seconds. The redeeming feature is the B-side, Rock of All Ages, which sounds just as Beatlesque, but this is a 1964 era rave up, and it's great fun. Badfinger cut a number of bona fide classics, Day After Day, Without You, No Matter What, and Baby Blue, forever tied as it is to the most overrated TV show in history. But for all that, Badfinger might just be the worst screwed over band in rock and roll history. It's a story all of its own. Suffice to say that both Apple and Warner Brothers treated them abominably. Alan Klein and their manager Stan Polly, well, Polly was a flat out crook and Alan Klein was, well, Alan Klein. And they, for some inexplicable reason, signed the worst record deal of all time. Largely, I think so, Polly could steal all their money. And a talented and worthwhile band was not only let to die, but two of the members were driven to their own doom under it. <sighs> let's have a cheery story now. Or let's not. Number six was one of those songs that is so bad, so laughably terrible, that it just embeds itself in your memory. Two Little Boys by Rolf Harris. Regardless of how you judge Harris these days, he has a litany of some of the worst songs ever recorded piled up behind him. Timey Kangaroo Downsport is all but totally banned in Australia. If anything, it's even more racist than the previously mentioned My Boomerang Won't Come Back. Uh, I'll forget it. Time for Fowl's Fabulous World of Facts. Here's a fact. Rolf Harris songs are national embarrassments. Here's some more useful facts. The big rise of this week is My Bella Ami by T-Set, up 14 places to number 3. T-Set were another Dutch band in what was clearly a golden age for Nader Pop. I may have just made that word up. With T-Set and Shocking Blue on the charts, Golden Earring no doubt off doing something weird and proggy, and the seeds of the great Dutch glam rock scene. Seriously, I'll do a presentation on it soon, but Bonnie Sinclair and Unit Gloria, are ultra glam of the highest order, were being sown. Plus, Feyenoord won the European Cup and Ajax were going to win the next three on the bounce. For a brief time, it must have seemed that these tall, polite and prosperous people were taking over. The song we couldn't get rid of fast enough was Jam Up and Jelly Tight by Tommy Rowe, which dropped 12 spots to number 36, a most 
undeserved fate from one of the heroic pioneers of bubblegum. Number one in the USA this week was Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel, which debuted on the local charts this week, and in the UK it was Wandering Star by Lee Marvin, soon to be replaced by Bridge Over Troubled Water, which peaked at number two here, denied top spot by Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky. Number one album around the groovier pads and the hippest hippie shacks was Led Zeppelin 2. Back to the countdown as we count downward in a downly direction. Occupying the critical position between number four and number six, known in the countdown in trade as number five, were the Beatles with Let It Be. In a shock twist, this record never made number one. Beaten back by the Stalingrad-like defense of the top spot put up by the legendary Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes by Edison Lighthouse. Number four was a rubbish song called Melting Pot which defies the laws of evolution, physics and genetics in its lyrics. But given they are all written to appeal to hippies and 12 year olds, hardly seems to be the greatest of sins. But Blue Mink who performed the song were a very interesting group with strong links to both this series and the Righteous Bow Jambo. They were in fact one of the quirkiest of English supergroups, Elton John's studio drummer Barry Morgan, that guy that no one can quite figure out what he does but seems to pop up everywhere nonetheless, Ray Cooper, and legendary hit-making session bassist Herbie Flowers with a rhythm section, cult legend Alan Parker on guitar, Dusty Springfield's gal pal Maddie Val on vocals, and their songwriters were the near ubiquitous Roger Cook and Roger Greenaway. They lasted for three top 40 hits, this by some way the biggest, and according to the Boffins, the 875th biggest hit of the physical era, besting by a single place the mighty, and some would say much more deserving, Teenage Rampage by The Sweet. Number three is the amazing Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes by Edison Lighthouse. A pop classic in anyone's hands, the real interest here is the great Tony Burrows, lead singer extraordinaire who sang lead vocal on five number one hits for five different acts and was go-to backup vocal for many years for the likes of Elton John and Cliff Richard. Despite Wikipedia claiming it, it's not true that Burroughs sang lead for three different groups on the same episode of Top of the Pops in 1970, but he did sing for two on at least four occasions. Love Grows rose to a rightful number one spot and spent four Beatle-defeating weeks there and disappeared from the charts at the end of May, while still high in the top ten as part of the purge of British and European songs that followed the radio band. See the Righteous Bow Jambo number 23. A sad end for one of our mightiest hits. The Giacinto Facetti of this week's chart brings easy listening time at number two, with Glen Campbell and Bobby Gentry's cover of the Everly Brothers' perennial All I Have to Do Is Dream. Not much to say here really, Glen Campbell's voice is not exceptional, but far from the worst thing you'll ever hear. Bobby Gentry's is a little closer to the worst thing you'll ever hear, but does occasionally rise to the level of unexceptional. And it is a lovely song. And that brings us to the diametric opposite of the Pretender and the successor to the number one crown. The actual reigning number one this week in the city on the river, by the bay, in the rain, on the edge of the swamp. Hit it, Gene. Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. Yes, the band that was famously too cool to release singles in their home country released them all the time here in Australia to none too great success, two top tens, Whole Lot of Love and Black Dog, but Whole Lot of Love ruled supreme in Brisbane for four weeks in the top slot, taking over from Lionel Rose and succumbing the next week to the gooey charms of Glen Campbell and Bobby Gentry. Surely the most famous hard rock song ever and one of the if not the most instantly recognisable guitar riffs in Riftum. This song actually survived the radio band because it was on Atlantic, an American label. And that brings us to the end of our groove infested trip through the time tunnel to the year we bade the Beatles farewell. Earth Day became a thing, albeit a useless one. Apollo 13 had a problem, Jimi Hendrix had a bigger problem, Everton were champions, Jacques and Rint won the Formula 1 title, which was impressive seeing he was dead for a not ungoodly part of the season. This week's super secret algorithm ranks this week at a score of 6.25. All that remains is to thank you for stopping by and to sincerely hope to see you here for our next edition, where the past is indeed a foreign country.